Let's do this. Subscribe to the channel. Ah! Let me do this. Let me do this. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, my guy. Got the guy game, and welcome back to the chat. Let's take a chill. I just leave the thumbnail. Y'all see the title, and today we got how to be and some more how to be anime, bro. And this one, how to be Nana. Is it Nana or Nene? I might say Nene, but I know it's Nana and Catalyst, Catalyst, Cal Catalyst, Nana or Nene. One and two. I'm gonna keep it real. I never saw this anime right here, bro. I don't even know what it's about. And I'm, I'm gonna need some y'all guy now. I'm gonna need some of my people that you know know about this anime right here. You got some help me out, man. Help me out on this one, man. Y'all already know my anime people. Help me out, please. Explain to this. And I also gotta see the detail how we can survive this nene or nana one or two. But you already know how your day been. You've been good. I've been no source. So you already know. Leak up the description below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm gonna do man. No more slogan. No more slogan. No more slogan. And the greatest, and the worst. I am. I got Desolate Island with a bloodthirsty killer. What would you do? Someone is murdering all of your classmates, and only mm. you can find out who it is. I'm here to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat Nana in Talentless Nana. These students are about to be killed one by one. This green-haired kid now is the most untalented kid in his class. So I think he, so. I'm ready to know. I bet you he the MC. He already he the MC. He the MC. You're gonna make some foolish mistakes. Watch this. Class. However, he's hiding a powerful secret. His classroom was transported to an island in the middle of nowhere to train for humanity's biggest threat. These alien monsters showed up on the planet around 50 years ago and are now even able to hide amongst us, just waiting to strike. These students have been sent to a desolate island to train for their next attack. The teacher announces that a transfer student is set to arrive at any second. That's when this pink-haired girl, Nana, shows up late, walking in and introducing herself to the class. She tells the students that her talent is to read people's minds. The teacher assigns her to sit next to Nanao's desk. He mentions that with all the students present, they need to assign a class leader. Nana puts her hands up and vouches for her new desk neighbor to be given the position. However, no one else agrees. The potential leaders decide to duke it out on the playground, and the teacher gives them permission to begin fighting. They duke what? They about to fight. Why can't they just have like a little um a debate, bro? Are they going in? Well, let's go. Battle it out and throw down, but the long-haired pretty kid. Oh, they got powers. It comes out victorious. Furious, the skinhead throws a gigantic fireball his way, headed straight for the new girl. But Nana runs in front of her and blocks the blast, admitting that he does have a talent of his own, neutralizing other people's talents. All right, these oh, kids are. Yo, that's. God, oh. See, I ain't knew they had powers. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Are supposedly training for the incoming apocalypse, where they'll supposedly fight an evil known as the enemies of humanity. This girl has been sent by the government to stop the true enemies of humanity, which the government thinks is actually these kids. But while this whole ordeal is about to get messy as hell, these kids should have been more suspicious of what they were training for to begin with, because no one has actually ever seen an enemy of humanity, which means that all of these kids have just blindly been training for something that this institution couldn't even prove existed to begin with and this fact makes all these kids gullible as hell and this is something right. that the easy to fool this little turd will take advantage of if these kids continue to be naive as they've been but even nana has exhibited signs of this very trait because proving someone is an enemy by showing them a simple kill count number on a phone to signify their threat level is some highly gullible bs and this kill count number seems to be relying on nothing more than purely theoretical speculation rather than field grade analytics and this agency that controls nana doesn't even seem to have any hard evidence to back up how they know these kids are capable of what they say they are Based Basically, everyone stuck on this island is as dumb as Wilson, and we sure as crap aren't Tom Hanks. After hey, I like Tom Hanks. After school, Nanao and Nana meet up, and he gives her more details about his abilities. He can disable users' abilities. However, he can't what? Wait, neutralize oh, talents about let me, let me, let me his abilities. He can disable users' abilities. However, he can't neutralize talent users with psychic abilities. The two. Oh, he can't really. So. She, she can read people's minds, so she got, like, psychic. So that's, like, technically psychic. Yeah, that's technically psychic. Then hold hands, and Nana realizes that she can no longer read minds. Suddenly, she pulls oh. Nanao over the cliffside. He manages to grab a conveniently placed hanging rope. And oh, so she can't read minds. I don't want her thinking she can read minds. 
She, 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 she's a monster. Looks at her shocked. She tells him that the students are the real enemies of humanity, and she'll do anything in her power to kill them all. Okay, the only thing Nanao can do to survive. Yo, I thought, yo, this is crazy. I, if, if I were him, I'm gonna have to fight her head on, bro. I gotta get rid of her is to do a perfect feet first dive into the water and swim to shore even that is risky because the current could very well pull or push him to the cliff face and then suck him underwater and drown him anyways the Ooh. drop from the top of the cliff edge is about 180 feet meaning mm. now is falling from a height similar to niagara falls cliff divers have successfully made jumps from 100 plus feet before and survived even higher jumps and there are it's possible he probably could survive that I had come out with a little bruises, but he's still gonna manage to survive it. There are also real life examples of people successfully surviving Niagara Falls yeah. in order to maximize his chances and before he brain over him he loses his grip and now must make sure he falls feet first cross his legs at the ankles and clutch them together tightly the last thing he wants would be oh. to have a high velocity seawater mm. enema or have his legs dislocated when forced into a full split by the impact of hitting the water he must oh see i haven't thought about that part right now dang Cross one arm across the chest and clutch his elbow tightly to the chest, with the other hand covering the mouth and the nose tightly with the hand. The sea is going to be cold, and by reflex, he'll want to suck in a breath when he gets dunked in the cold water. You do not want to suck in a breath until you get back to the surface. He's going to go deep. He's got to sit tight until he quits falling down. Once his momentum slows down, he has to follow the bubbles to get back up to the surface. If it is too dark to see the bubbles, he has to hold his breath and drift up until he can see sunlight. He doesn't want to be swimming for the bottom, thinking he's headed for air. The next day, Nanao has gone missing and no one knows what happened to him. Nana has lunch with this kid, who explains his powers as being able to go back in time. But then the oh, other student who- I like her. That sounds like when My Hero Academia, if I, if I, if I, like, in My Hero Academia, bro, I want to be like an anti-villain, like, be on, the, be on, in the middle, bro. And I want, like, my quote, I want it to be, my quote, I want it to be, like, time control. That way so I can control time. See? See, my brain, bro, y'all, but my brain crazy, bro. Y'all don't want that showed up along with Nana. Kyoya here interrupts their conversation to tell Nana that he saw her and Nanao leaving school together yesterday. And yeah, I'll, I'll rock with him because he got time. He, he, he like time control or something. I miss with him. She's been acting very suspicious. Kyoya then leaves the room and the time traveling student urges oh, no, no. her I mean, you know, he the time travel dude. Now I'm looking at the other guy. My fault. To come along and try to find their missing classmate. They visit the dorms and the student goes back in time for a split second. He falls to the floor drained but decides to try Try again. This time, he spots both her and Nanao walking out of the school. They change locations and check out the cliffside. The time traveler uses his talent again, disappearing and reappearing in a flash. This time, though, he mentions he made eye contact with Nana's past self, forcing him to return back to the present, revealing that this is one of his talent's limitations. That night, Nana knocks on the time traveler's door and tells him that he missed some vital information. She brings him to the forest and tells him that they, in fact, were chased by an enemy of humanity. Humanity, and Nana was too and she she was it too scared to say anything before that now was eaten alive and she was forced to run away Nana begs him to go back into the past and change what happened but this girl is one evil mofo and the time traveler transports back only to drown in the past okay this yeah she played you man uno reverse card on you man you supposed to be the time control time traveler bro come on this is crazy, and now we know that Nana is up to no good. Nana saw him use his power to punch Skinhead, but she didn't remember seeing the time traveler himself standing up and punching him, just the aftermath. But the problem is, is that this time traveler can travel through time, but not space. Because while you'd think he would have traveled into the past and appeared in the same spot as he was standing in, this was not the case in reality. Because when the time traveler went back, he mentioned seeing Nana walking with Nanao, and Nana's past memories were overwritten to remember seeing him, and which caused him to zap back into the present. And all this happened with him disappearing and reappearing in the exact same position. But but during the final bit where this time traveler dude disappeared, he disappeared above the lake. And this was as clear as day that he was standing above the lake. Yet when he came back, he somehow reappeared below the lake. Which if we go with, with what we saw on how his powers worked from before, it's strange and doesn't make sense how he time traveled back. But this time reappeared in a different spot than the spot he was standing from before. Now, it's possible that the topography and spatial plane is something that time traveler has to consciously 
mostly account for, and something that is not a given within his power skill set. If this is the case though, then this could mean that every time he jumped, he would have had to picture from beforehand where he would end up in relation to where his body came from, something along the lines that Nightcrawler would have had to do from before each jump. Visually picture where he would end up beforehand in order to avoid the possibility of teleporting right into a wall. Also, we heard that Time Traveler's abilities were affected after each time jump and made him tired. This could mean that after numerous time jumps, he need to he need to train more on that. If he would have trained more on that, he, yo, me time. I mean, like, bro, if if I could have something like that, I want time, time control. I want me something like time control, fast travel. Now. I can control time, bro. That's just me jumps his ability to plan his spatial landing was affected and instead of landing simply from where he left from above the lake due to his extreme fatigue he could have missed jumped and landed below the lake itself causing his death and while this theory is a little suspicious it's not <laughs> suspicious enough that it couldn't be plausible the fact however is is that this kid should have taken better precautionary measures with a girl that he was already suspicious of to begin with this kid has the power to go back in time however the main problem with traveling backwards in time, which at this point is thought to be impossible due to something known as the grandfather paradox, and comes from the idea that if a person travels to a time before their grandfather had children and killed that same person, that act would make their very own birth impossible to begin with. But according to some physicists, this problem can be avoided by something called the Novikovy self-consistency principle, which is a theory on paper at least that would allow- So how we know is that real, bro? for such a paradox to happen, meaning you could in fact go back in time and be able to change the course of history, but rather than alter the present, you could simply create another timeline that would never interfere with the current timeline you just came from. This is called the many worlds interpretation, meaning that there is a possibility that the time traveler kid in fact may never have been able to alter the present, and may in fact exist in an entirely different separate timeline in the past. And the fact that the strongest talented users so far on the island have evolved out of traumatic experiences makes me think that he could have used his talent one more time out of panic. Since he couldn't swim, he could have actually still been alive and resided in an entirely separate timeline. This is how insane this kid's powers were, and the fact that yeah. Nana tricked him makes this guy an idiot. And everyone in this school here so dang gullible. The next day, the students begin to wonder where their two missing classmates have gone. Nana follows Kyoya into the hallway, and he asks her to hang out. They meet at his dorm room, and he brings her in to reveal a massive collection of video games. And just before when Nana wants to leave, he tells her that he found Nanao's watch. Kyoya brings her to the cliffside and asks mm -hmm. about where she was during her look through now, bro. She don't know what to say. She's gonna get rid of him too first night on the island. Nanao has been missing since that date and no trace of him has been found until now. He shows the broken watch and points to the time being stuck around 6 p.m. However, Kyoya admits that she's too innocent to be the one responsible for what happened. The next day, they visit their teacher to they might even smoke discuss what they can do about the missing students and he tells them that there's no outside communication until the graduation date. In the hallway, Kyoya begins to notice something is off about Nana. He checks the storage room outside to feed the cat, finding the place empty, and pours milk onto a pan. He then turns on the stove when suddenly it blows up into flames. Nana now finds his crispy body outside and rushes to find help. He grabs her leg before she can leave and reveals his special ability. He's invincible. However, Ooh. he has lost his sense of smell because of this incredible power. Wow, that's so unfair. The next day, Nana begins to realize that people are getting suspicious. Yeah, you think? This shy girl, Michiru, notices a mark on her leg and kneels down to lick her wounds. She thanks her for the kind uh, gesture. However, this shy girl isn't as nice as she seems. Nana looks around up on her phone and finds out that the girl's kill potential reaches over 150,000 people. Nana finds her outside and reveals that her classmates have set her up on a fake date. They run off and she thanks Nana for having her back. That night, Nana opens her front door to find Kyoya sitting outside. He asks her if he can come in but gets rejected. Instantly, see, 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 I had to, bro, nope, I bust in there because she sees us. 
finding it strange that Nana was going somewhere late at night. After, he hears a cry in the hallway and runs to Michiru's room, finding Nana lying on the floor wounded. Michiru blames the attack on the enemies of humanity, and the other students rush in to see what's going on. The next day, Kyoya presses the subject on last night's incident. Nana explains that she heard enemies coming from Michiru's room. Being invincible, he questions why she didn't bring him along. He also tells Nana that the monster should have been too strong for a small group of students to make it run away. Kyoya then begins to suspect the evil girl even more. And that's when Michiru suggests that Nana becomes the new leader of their classroom. Okay, Nana is one no. sneaky mofo and her inserting herself into becoming the leader of- Yeah, I'm saying no, no. The group is one of the smartest things to do. She'll essentially be spearheading the operation and hunting down the enemies of humanity, while she simultaneously causes all of this crap to happen to begin with. But this means that Kyoya should have been even more suspicious of Nana, because this is not the first time that she's been found out at the crime scene and her power means that she is the only one who can hear when trouble is nearby, but up until now has coincidentally been unable to hear any crime until after it happens. Interesting. I mean, if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, and looks like a duck, chances are it's probably a duck. Nana up until now has had way too many coincidences with all of these deaths, and while they may seem random, when put all together, they make for a pretty compelling case. This is why Kiyoya should have investigated further by spending more time with Nana, because the one mistake he made up until now has been to leave her alone, without figuring out what she is truly capable of. And I mean, knowing your enemy is the first step towards defeating your enemy. Which yeah, keep your friend close, but your enemy closer, bro. Remember that. Keep your friend close, but your enemy closer. Which is why I would not only spend the day with Nana, I would pester her every single day to figure out just what exactly is her powers, what her limits are, and her weaknesses. Does it tire her out to read minds? Once we figure out her limitations, we'll be better able to piece together if and what she could be able to do, and which will give us a better chance to figure out and prove that she is lying to us and everyone here. Because the problem with Nana's powers, unlike the fire guy's powers for example, is that her power doesn't involve any perceivable change within her surrounding environment. Which means that for all we know, she could simply be lying about her mind powers. <coughs> I mean, it could be real. Because we can't actually see if she's doing what she's been saying she's been doing. And that is a problem. The entire classroom then agrees to let Nana be the new leader of the group. But Kyoya notices something is off regarding the stab wound at home. Kyoya begins to theorize that the girl intentionally hurt herself knowing that Michiru would heal her wounds. However, he can't seem to find a reason why the girl would be trying to kill his entire classroom. Outside of the dorms, this student approaches Nana and tells her that he's discovered something strange about the girl. The student reveals that he can see into the future and whips Ooh. out a photograph showing Nana killing him. They sit down at the cafeteria to sort out their problems and the future seeing kid explains that whatever he sees in his- He reminds me of what's called um, from my hero academia on um, the, the lightning guy. I forget his name though. His future photographs will happen with 100% accuracy. Suddenly, he brings out a photo of her killing the now that night. The future seeing kid blackmails her into giving him a back massage like a dirty back. See, bro, he shouldn't be going to towards the dude. Come on, man. They sleep in the same room overnight and he wakes up to another surprise from Nana. He explains that during his sleep, five photos will come from this camera that will predict the future. However, he's only got four in his possession. He checks Nana's clothes to find a photo showing Nana dead on the ground. She freaks out and the man makes a deal with her. He's going to hide in the PE shed overnight and see if the photo will come true. Okay, this is insane and what just happened proved that Nana is more of a devious little turd blossom than we thought. However, this future seeing kid should have known that someone who had the guts to come to a superhero filled island and begin killing people would have been a little more cunning than your average little bird. The fact that the matter is, is that this kid knew who Nana really was when Yeah, come on man she first came to the island, and blackmailing her into becoming his girlfriend was a bad move. Really? However, this kid's power is very passive and limited in scope. Therefore, he should have realized that Nana would have used his camera to play a trick on him. I mean, it's not that hard to put two and two together. In fact, I'm more surprised that no one has tried to pull that trick on him before. Also, already knowing the limitations of his powers means that he should have thought that someone could have potentially shown him a fake picture of the future, since clearly the photos that showed the future looked identical to 
any Polaroid photo shot, which means that this was his weakness, and one he should have known to look out for beforehand. Also, none in the picture is showed to die by ligature strangulation, which in reality would have been a lot more difficult to do, and would have taken a lot longer to die, which can take anywhere from 1 to 15 minutes. This should have at the very least arised some suspicions within him, because if someone was choosing to kill someone by choking them, they would have likely opted to use their hands, or something more sturdy than a jumping rope. Also, the one thing he had going for him is that this picture showed the exact location of where the future incident was going to take place. Not this bad. meant he shouldn't have been so willingly gone to the location to tempt fate. As Albert Einstein once said, The distinction between past, present, and future is only a stubbornly persistent illusion. Because even if the future in theory was already written, just like the grandfather paradox, the future, just like trying to change the past, would result in countless possible outcomes as to how the future would unfold, since the future hasn't happened yet, meaning it can happen in one of many ways. And this kid should have at least suspected that his premonitions were possible outcomes, not absolute truths as he claims. In knowing this possibility, this could have allowed the kid to realize that he actually had all the time in the world, and should not have rushed to the shed to begin with. Rather, he should have opted to hide in an entirely different spot like in a friend's room, in a place that was closer to the main school and its students. That night, the future scene kid walks in and carelessly sits down, not realizing that Nana is about to strike. Suddenly, she attacks him with the same weapon from the photograph, but the boy manages to fight her off. He pushes her to the ground and is ready to enjoy his victory. But that's when Nana reveals that she's pricked him with a poison needle when he grabbed her. The boy falls to mm. the ground and she explains that the photo of her dying was fate. However, she still took one of his five photos from the night before. That's when the lights turn on to reveal what the stolen photo really was. And then Michiru and Kyoya walk in to find Nana caught red-handed. Realizing that she's going to be found out, she begs Michiru to fix the boy up ASAP. She admits that the future seeing kid was blackmailing her, showing her embarrassing photos from the future to pretend that they were going out. She blames the boy's current state on a medical condition, or from the invisible enemies of humanity. A few hours later, Michiru realizes that her talent is beginning to make her tired. She rubs his back and finds a photo inside his shirt. Suddenly, Nana appears and questions what she she's looking at. Michiru hands over the photo, wondering what the hell she just saw. Nana lies and says that the boy's future predictions only show what he's seeing in his dreams. The next day, the class attends the boy's funeral. The principal complains about oh, there being- Come on, man. man she's just getting away. The one can't stop her. No police on the island, and Kyoya interrupts to voice his suspicions. He demands an autopsy when suddenly the coffin begins shaking and the boy comes back to life. This short kid walks in and reveals his talent is to be able to reanimate dead bodies. He tells them that the corpse will tell everyone his cause of death if the body remembers. Okay, Kyoya now has one of the most uh -oh. important assets on this island, and that is this kid. Because up until now, his gut has told him who the real killer on this island is, and despite conveniently looking in innocent and kind of dumb. Kyoya knows that Nana's whereabouts during all the murders are too much of a coincidence. But what this guy needs, just like in real life court cases, is the evidence that directly connects Nana's dirty hands with all the murders that have taken place so far. However, it's odd that despite the piles of bodies growing over the last few days, that Kyoya hasn't already started using the school's children to his advantage. Because remember, we're at a super powered school, which means that it's not out of this world to assume that the school is full of super powered kids and would likely have class records detailing just exactly what their powers all are. And Kyoya clearly being all pally with the teacher earlier means that he could have easily snuck in and got some access to get his hands on those very important records. This means that all this time, instead of whining and pouting about Nana being the killer, he should have just started looking into all the kids' powers that he could have better used to help him find out the killer's identity. If he did this from the start and go an all lone wolf detective, then he could have found out about this next necromancer kids abilities from the very beginning. Kyoya wants to get to the bottom of this, but everyone here says that reviving this corpse is too disrespectful, and no one here is about to let him shit on this corpse. Kyoya then has no choice, and his investigation into who killed this kid ends right here. That night, Nana is in the short kid's room while he sleeps, and she's gonna get rid of him too a needle into the boy's neck, injecting poison into his body. She moves to his girlfriend's room and gets ready to inject another needle. When suddenly, the short kid attacks and holds her down. The girlfriend reveals that she is the true necromancer and that her boyfriend is actually already dead. Knowing that the oh. girlfriend is having... 
Reverse Uno, okay, I like that. Having relationship troubles, she promises to tell what the short kid is thinking if they let her off. The girl obliges and Nana runs away. She escapes the dorm and rushes into the forest. Necromancy chick and her boyfriend chase her down, looking around and in the bushes for any sight of her. Suddenly, she pops out trying to grab the girl's necklace. But her boyfriend is about to attack her, so she pushes the girlfriend over. They chase her deeper into the forest, and Nana is suddenly ambushed by more corpses. She runs into a broken shelter and begins fixing it up. But they find her and she runs inside to block the door, thinking she's safe, and begins to set a trap. But Necromancy Chick already has a trap of her own. Asking Nana, didn't you check under the bed? Suddenly, three corpses jump out and attack her, pinning her to the ground. But fortunately for her, the sun has risen, freezing the corpses in their tracks. Necromancy Girl... Also, uh, also, she like powerful. Uh, no, 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 like, like when daytime here, I guess she ain't, she can't use them friend here tells her that the reanimated corpses can still move as long as the light doesn't reach them oh okay <laughs> okay this twist so she pretty much op is shockingly delicious but this chick could have been more careful and methodical from the jump so far from what we've seen of this necromancer unlike nana this chick lacks a killing spirit and this battle was uneven from the start because despite her powers and nana's seemingly lack of any powers nana seems to be the only one on this island that truly possesses a murderer's mentality the necromancer chick from the get-go should have at the very least been more guarded and if she couldn't bring herself to kill nana she should have incapacitated her by breaking her legs or something because this lack of foresight will come back to bite her now like most people this necromancer chick probably had some concept of time passing and therefore should have used this to her advantage chasing nana right before sunrise knowing that her power stopped working technically during the day meant that she should have verbally stated to nana that she would give her a 12 hour head start to leave the island before evacuating the premises with all of her corpse friends all of this should have been done before the sun rose this could have kept up up the illusion that her powers had no limit in theory and did not expire at sunrise. The fact that this necromancy the OP bro chick willingly admitted her weakness too was beyond dumb and the same Girl. thing with the future saying kid these kids have been way too willing to reveal the limitations of their powers like dang what are you doing stop doing that and a necromancy chick locks a wounded nana inside 24 hours later, she comes back to the shelter where Nana's staying, finding it completely empty. She sends her corpses out to search for her and heads back to the dorms. But that's when Nana surprises them and pushes them both over and takes a slip of paper from her back pocket. She brings them to the cliffside and threatens to drop the piece of paper into the ocean if the item disappears. Then the girlfriend can no longer touch it to reanimate her short, dead boyfriend. Suddenly, she poisons the girl and drops the piece of paper into the ocean. Nana disposes of the bodies and then finds Michiru's bully in the forest. She distracts the girl and poisons her while she's not looking, telling her that she'll provide the antidote in exchange for the girl's phone. She agrees and hands it over, but Nana opens up her other hand, revealing that there was never any medicine, allowing the girl to die on the ground. The next day, Kyoyo questions her about the missing students. She admits that they're all dead and brings the class with her to see their corpses. She blames the short kid's death on his girlfriend, claiming that she tripped off of the cliff to her death. She politely asks the skinhead to burn the corpses along with the others in the forest in order to give the dead a sense of dignity and closure. Yeah. Yeah, closure. Like, so I won't open that case up. Come on, man. Yeah, right. Okay, I gotta call bull crap on what Nana is saying right now because this is so suspicious. Up until now, she has literally been coincidentally unaccounted for during all of the murders that if Yeah, when she even got when she even entered the building, she was a sus. She, 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 she hella sus happened so far but the problem is even with all of the coincidences in the world unless we can directly link nana to all of this we have nothing because in a court mm. of law the presumption of innocence is a legal principle that states everyone is innocent until proven guilty and to top it off nana comes off as so freaking cute and adorable to the point that she is still our leader and this means that just like trying to make someone look guilty in front of a sympathetic jury this is going to be an uphill battle because no one here is on our side to begin with and the perception of nana's character means that made her like the leader like 
crazy, man. Means that everyone will find any compelling coincidences or evidence that we find against Nana to be just hearsay at best, unless we catch her directly in the act. This means that we have two options, really. We'll either need to catch Nana or whoever the real killer is dead to rights in the middle of the next murder, or we need to make it so increasingly difficult to the point to kill where the effort to go through with any more murders won't be worth the amount of pressure we're putting on. For the last part, I would say now that even if we have no outside help coming to the island, we need to start taking proactive measures, starting with changing how this school operates. Since we don't have anything on Nana, I would focus more on scaring the crap out of everyone and make everyone here scared for their lives. Because why the heck is everyone here so chill about all of these deaths? Because just like Hitler's successful fear-mongering tactics in World War II, you need to grab everyone's attention first in order to get them to do what you want. According to evolutionary psychology, humans have a strong impulse to pay attention to danger because of our inclination to survive as a species throughout our evolutionary history, so we need to take a play right out of Adolf's playbook Blech. and use the concept of fear, or more specifically, highlight the threat of a murderer being on campus to our advantage. Scare the public, scare the students. We'll be able to inform them of the reality of the situation and from then on, get them to do what we want. Such as for starters, changing the rooms and areas that people sleep and converse in. If we can get everyone to sleep in the halls where everybody is present and accounted for, this will be one method that we can use to exponentially make the killer's next few steps all the more difficult. And this is just one tactic that we need to start using to slow all of these murders down. From here on out, we'll be able to buy time and figure out our next move, and or catch Nana, I mean the murderer, in the act itself. Outside of the dorm rooms, Kyoya leaves the students with a simple realization. Nana disappears every time someone is murdered. Suddenly, they hear a scream from inside the building and rushes in to witness a deadly sight. Another student is dead in her room. They check her phone, and Kyoya blames the whole incident on Nana. The yeah, because she used that needle. The poison, the needle, come on, man. Other classmates then rush in and demand him to explain what's going on. He then says that Nana brutally killed Poison Girl and left her friend's contacts spiked with poison. And in doing so, she makes sure that Teleportation Girl will never be able to find her friend. He then explains that he already knew that the girl has to eat raw animals from the forest and finds it suspicious that Nana was in the exact same location. Kyoya then exposes her for wanting to burn the corpses and tells her the evidence speaks for itself. She took the girl's phone and texted her friend, informing her that the contacts were going to be returned. Kyoya then checks her clothes, but finds no evidence to prove her guilty. He then demands to take care of the corpse until morning, and agrees to report the incident to the head office. Later in the night, Michiru finds Nana sitting outside of the dorm room. Nana asks her what she's doing, and she responds by saying that she's patrolling for enemies, when suddenly Michiru pulls a knife to her throat. Nana pushes the knife away and demands to know what's going on. Michiru says she knows she's a bloodthirsty killer, and it's only a matter of time until she gets caught. That's when their classmates interrupt, and Michiru goes back inside. The next day, they meet up on the cliffside, and Nana confronts her about being a fake Michiru. The girl admits that she isn't the original, and reveals himself as the ex-student Jin. He explains that he's here to make a deal, and takes her back to his hideout. The ex-student makes them drinks and explains that he's been on the island for five years since all of his classmates killed each other. He says that he managed to escape the island with his ability to shapeshift into any living being and flew off of the island. Shapeshift? Hey, shapeshift's kind of good, man. I don't know, but you know, shapeshifting, yeah. Straight, though, I ain't gonna count. However, his own grandmother refused to believe that he was alive. He then returned to the island to find a oh. safe haven and figure out the secret behind this deadly school. Suddenly, the ex-student begins coughing, and Nana reveals that his drink was poisoned. She picks up her phone to call the higher-ups, but then a fake version Kyoya snatches it from behind. She tries to run, but Jin then turns into Skinhead and uses his ability to summon up a giant fireball, badly injuring her. Jin questions her background, and she explains that her family was killed by the enemy of humanity. The next day, the classmates attend the funeral of another student. Kyoya asks the principal to speak with the higher-ups, realizing the situation is becoming more and more suspicious. He then finds both Nana and Michiru hanging out in the morning, demanding that they follow him somewhere. He then reveals another deadly murder. However, Nana realizes that it wasn't her doing, and the dead guy's green-haired girlfriend admits that she... I think it was the, uh, sh uh, the shift shaker guy that did that.
He was the one who found the body. The girlfriend brings everyone outside and uses her ability on Kyoya. That night, the principal knocks on Nana's door later in the night to hand over her missing uniform. She thanks him and realizes that the poison vial hidden inside is gone. Kyoya interrupts to say that he's going to be interrogating the girlfriend. That's when the principal mentions that the higher-ups from the mainland will soon be visiting. Him and Nana question the girlfriend on the incident. They then discuss what was said in the hallway and Kyoya determines her to be the killer. He suspects that the couple had a fight beforehand and that the girl went crazy, killing him and using her ability to cover up any evidence. Alright, if I'm Kyoya, this event will- I thought I would say shelter only make our jobs that much harder. Because now what we have here is two loose threads in a very messy web of conflicting lies. This girl has the ability to basically control and manipulate the pressure out of air. She can also create lethal air blades that as we saw you wouldn't want to mess with. She's mm. basically like a little discount airbender like Aang or Ong if you mess with M. Night Shyamalan's airbender version. I pity you if that's the case. But regardless, something is off here because the body was found by the green haired girlfriend in the morning. But the corpse has has clearly been here for a few hours, meaning this poor little dude died at night. But if this is the case, again, we gotta ask, why did the group of boys next door didn't hear anything? Now, there is a very obvious possibility that they could all be in on it, but this seems unlikely, and judging from their character and demeanor, I doubt this. Now, even though this isn't considered a superhuman ability, it might as well be, because on average, human screams can be loud as hell, going near as 100 decibels in volume, and for comparison, the sound of a whisper is around 30 decibels. A normal conversation is 60 decibels, and a motorcycle cycle running about is about 95 decibels. And depending on the wall, a conversation of about 40 decibels will be able to be heard. The average wall thickness in Japan is about 9.8 inches thick, which would be considered quite thin in something in comparison to the average wall thickness of a skyscraper over in the west, such as in Australia, where the thickness of their walls tend to be around 19 inches. But in general, the makeup of interior walls will feature several layers of wall types and thicknesses, which will consist of sheathing, siding, wall boards, and finishes, including air gaps and so on. This means that the wall thickness for different structures will vary between residential walls and the rest. However, it seems as though this school walls is made of much heavier construction materials, such as concrete, which will usually be around 8 to 12 inches thick. And also from the fact that this school is on an island where the weather could be more rough, leads me to believe that concrete blocks were the foundation of the walls, and this material is naturally resistant to extreme temperatures and has increased thermal insulation properties, and it will not degrade as a result result of ice and thaw, making it a reliable material, and one that will be able to isolate sound very well. The concrete walls here would have likely been able to absorb some of the energy that would have come from the boyfriend's screen. However, such a scream produced from the boyfriend at around 90 decibels would have still been able to be heard at least somewhat by the group next door if we take into account that the entrance of the room featured a wooden door, because a standard wooden door tends to only offer around 20 decibels of soundproofing at around 1.4 inches of width between one side of the door and the other in the things i did have my mind my my brain like mind blowing like like stuff like that fascinating George, it means it's impossible that you put a lot into this but the boys wouldn't have heard any type of scream. Also, someone entering a room would have likely made the victim inside the room turn around to see who's coming in, because that's what people do when someone enters a room. But if the victim didn't recognize the killer, obviously he would have either used his power, screamed, or there would have been a noisy commotion of some kind that would have been heard through the walls and the door at least a little bit. The fact that the victim didn't scream and had his back turned here suggests that the victim knew the killer and let the killer in before the murderer literally backstabbed him. This makes the girlfriend super suspicious as hell, as she would have been a very familiar face and could have killed the boyfriend after he let her in when he wasn't looking. Or the fact that the body due to rigor mortis setting in after post-mortem could indicate that the crime scene happened elsewhere, meaning this kid was killed somewhere else and brought in here afterwards, which could have also explained why no one heard the screams to begin with. And if that's the case, this still would have made the girlfriend my primary suspect and not Nana, at least in this case. If I'm Kiyoya, then the one thing I would start working on is the motive behind and this will likely explain the reasoning which will either make the girlfriend look more guilty or more innocent, which could benefit us by narrowing down the suspect list. Either way, the motive behind the girlfriend is the one thing I would begin focusing on, and this will help inform everything else. Later, Jin finds her looking through Michiru's diary. He hands over a poison vial that she left behind and tells her that Michiru has been in the shower for far too long. She goes into the bathroom and sees her passed out in the tub. She then takes the exhausted girl to bed and notices 
confesses that she's suffering from a strange illness. She then brings Kyoya to help, but he can't seem to find out what's wrong. Later, the girlfriend visits and asks her how Michiru got injured. That's when Nana realizes that something is clearly off. That night, Jin visits to inform her that he spotted Michiru walking out extremely late. He then mentions that the girl said she was called by somebody, but doesn't know who. Nana chases after her missing friend and finds her injured in the forest. She then jumps in front of the unknown killer's attack, severely injuring herself. And that's when Nana realizes that she knows exactly who the culprit is. One of the students that has the talent to leave his physical body and kill that student. She turns around to find out that the killer is the blonde kid Kentoro. He then stabs Nana one more time and she begs Michiru to stay away. And just when all hope is lost, the ghost version of himself begins to lose consciousness as Kyoya chokes him in the bathroom stall, stopping him from attacking. However, Nana is fatally wounded with only minutes before oh, death. Man. That's when Michiru comes back and begins to heal the injured Nana. Nana wakes up with her life saved, but she looks over to see that her friend is dead. Meaning oh, she sacrificed her, she sacrificed her self to save her friend. Come on. Meaning that she can now mark off another kill off of her kill list. But what do you think about Talentless Nana? Would you be able to survive? Let us know what you like and what you didn't like about the video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Ladies and gentlemen, oh yeah, man, nah, nah, that, that whole plan sacrificed her self to save her friend. Yeah, yeah man, yo, yo, hey, yo, man, I don't know what y'all think, man. Leave a bit of a description below. Like, comment, subscribe.